Obler bringing you another in our series of stories of the unusual. And once again, we caution you. These Lights Out stories are definitely not for the timid soul. So we tell you calmly and very sincerely, if you frighten easily, turn off your radio now. I... I know. It's time I am Father Donahue. And all as I am, I'm not ready to die. And you, uh, come closer, Father, and hear my miserable confession. <sighs> you know me as a good woman of the village. Yet uh, I've heard what you say. There's no finer old woman in all the islands than the widow of the Nell. Ah, but that's not so, Father Donahue. And if I'm to meet all my old friends in the island of paradise, then hear me out and pray for me. You know, my sons, Thomas and Paddy, born on the same cold winter's night they were. And the firstborn, Thomas, was as good as an angel in paradise. But the second, the one I named Paddy, was evil from the moment he took his first breath of God's good air. It was Thomas that carried the load of the family on his back, fishing from early to late. The Paddy, oh, that's right, drinking and brawling and running from work as if the devil himself was pulling him away. I pray to the good God every night that some goodness come into the man's heart. But with every year, he grew worse, stealing what his crooked tongue couldn't talk away from honest men. Ah, but his brother Thomas, he repaid me for all the trouble. A good boy. And when he came to me with the word that he was to marry Eileen, the heart in me sang, for the good God always meant for the two of them to be together. Ah, how I remember the day of the wedding, the sun shining. And the sky and the sea smooth as a baby's cheek. I was so happy, little knowing of the horror of what was to come. Oh, it was a happy morning. Oh, oh listen to the mother. Did you ever hear a happier sound in all creation? Why, shouldn't they be happy, Thomas? It's not every day that such a blessed marriage comes in the island. Ah, oh, the prettiest girl in all the blasts is waiting to be your bride as soon as the sun starts setting. My bride? Uh, oh, Mother, that's a grand word. I'm happy for you, my son. I wonder where Paddy can be. Paddy? Yes, he isn't around. You know where he is. Oh, that's right. It'll be a better wedding without him. Oh, no, Mother, don't say things like that. After all, he's your son and my brother. Oh, I get a sorrow in my heart as he's drinking and brawling. Paddy, you did come. Speak of it, you. And why shouldn't I be here? It's an honest stranger, so to welcome at your wedding. Oh, no, Paddy, that's not the way to talk. There's food and drink and... No, wait a minute. I've got more important things to do than to be filling me belly. Listen to me, Brother Thomas. Is your head that full of weddings that it can't hear a chance of making us all richer than a Yankee? What do you mean? Yes, speak up, Paddy. What devilment are you up to now? Devilment's nothing. It's honest money I'm, I'm talking about. And may the next pipes and tobacco be at me on wake if I'm not telling you the truth. I'm listening, Paddy. Let's hear what you have to say. Do you remember the hulk of a ship that was wrecked up in Eastern Abra a bit ago? Well? Well, I went there yesterday to see if there was anything worth having. Oh, listen to me, brother. In the bottom of a pool no deeper than this room is lying enough bolts of copper and brass to make you and me the richest men on the island. What? Ah, you can believe your ears. Wouldn't you rather bring the bride a pocketbook filled with gold sovereigns than the empty leather you've got now? But, Paddy, I... Ah, uh, I wish you, mother, you'd talk to the man. But if it's in the sea, it'll wait until after the wedding. Oh, wait, will it? And with those inish boats sailing all around the place? I tell you, it's now or never. And may my sword to the devil if I'm not saying two words. Uh, 
promise it would be nice to have a bit of money in the house. Yes. Well, then what are you waiting for? You've got a boat big enough to handle the stuff, and I'll be there to help you. And in three hours, you can be back here dancing. Oh, it's Irene. Let her have the word whether you stay or go. Stay or go where, Mother Dinell? What's going on, Thomas? Well, uh, you see, Eileen... Ah, you're the day short. Let me say it. Eileen, there's a fortune in brass and copper boats waiting for us in water no deeper than a man's neck over off in East Nablo. And Tommy here thinks you'd be fool enough to say no to his going. But, but must he go now? The sea doesn't wait. He'd be back in three hours, Eileen. Yeah, I just think, Eileen, you'd have a dress for every day of the week. Thomas, do you want to go? We could build a new house with the money. Mother Danelle, do you think Thomas should go now? I mean, with all them, aren't they? Well, we're so poor, and Thomas, young as he is, so worn and weary from work. Maybe this is God's blessing. A gift from heaven for putting our faith in him who watches over all of us. God's blessing is right. A hundred pounds. And we'll be the kings of the island. Come on now. We can take the side path down the Kuwait, brother. Eileen, is it your wish? I'd be a poor wife to you, Tom. If I stood in your way of making a living before our marriage. My darling. Ah, there'll be time enough for that now when we get back. Come on, Thomas. Let's get out of here. Hurry back to me, my dearest. The sea will take me to our good fortune, and the sea will bring me back. Uh, out this way, Thomas. Come on, hurry up. Yeah, I'm coming. I'm here to wedding, darling. God, go with you. Thomas! Yes, yes. I'll be back in three hours, Mother. As rich as a Yankee. Bye. Oh, 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 oh little baby, why should you cry? <laughs> Thomas is proud to see so many times. Why should you cry this time? Oh, my little no. I'm frightened. Frightened? And tell me, why should you be frightened? I don't know, but when that door closed behind him, it seemed as if the waters of the sea were closing over. Oh, Mother, the mill home is closed. I'm so afraid. Oh. And soon, Father Donahue, Eileen and I left the dancing and the fiddling behind and climbed the long path up to the top of the cliff so our eyes could see far out over the water. And all the time, Eileen kept crying that she'd never see Thomas again. But she's never seen Thomas again. Oh, oh Thomas. Oh, stop trying. I've never seen him. The things you're saying, girl. It's tempting the devil to do his evil work. Oh, I haven't climbed at this path for a minute. It's a little too steep for me, old bones. Thomas, where are you? Oh, now stop that, girl. Our Thomas has found so much copper and brass. It's taken him longer than he thought. Oh, Thomas wouldn't come back like he would. Oh, well, Paddy would if there was a shilling extra to be made, and he's talked Thomas into it with that sharp tongue of his. Oh, oh the last tip. I oh, know we'll see them. They're both weighed down with good fortune. Eileen! Eileen, stay away from the edge. You'll go over the cliff. Oh, Mother Danelle, to the west. Right. To the west where they went. The water. Oh, there might be that wind. Where did it come from? Out oh, of the west where he was. But, but in all my years, such a wind has never been before. The water. Look at it swirling and tossing before the wind. It's dead. No. My daughter's dead. No, no. Dead. Stop saying that. It's not dead, my Thomas. Eileen. Eileen, come back here. Come back from here. Oh, that was a time, Father Donahue. The wind grew wilder and wilder. In a minute, the sea was pounding at the base of the cliff. And the girl shrieking she wanted to die with Thomas. And me fighting her back from the edge and praying to the good God to give me old arms the strength to hold her back until she came to her senses. Ah, uh, none of us got a wink of sleep till the light of morning. Oh, that wind. I can hear it now. Snarling. A boat, a boat, your son oh, to the west. Why, my son? Aye, aye, come on. Dead? No, no, the boat's coming and there's living hands on the oars. Come on. Oh, there's a scotter, my knees, I thank you for their mercy. Mother Danelle, I heard someone say. Oh, Mother Danelle. Oh, I'm in need. I mean, the merciful God has brought them back. Oh. Come on, quick. They're trying to get into land. Hurry now. Oh, Mother Danelle, quick no. Oh, no way, oh. child, your shawl. Your shawl's there. Now oh. give me your arm. Oh, my old friend, so I can hardly walk. Yes, yes, lean on me. Oh. Yes. Yes, I'm moving as fast as I can. It's hard. It's hard against, against his wind. But it wind. Let him live. You bless it for the life of one. And I bless it for the life of two. Good neighbors. Good neighbors, let us through. My son. Let us through. Let us through. Oh, I can see nothing. The waves and the dogs. I mean, do you see? Oh, yes. Yes, Mother Dinelle. I see them. I see them. Well, point it out to me, girl. Where? Oh, over there. Follow my finger. Oh, oh, oh Mary, they're yes. coming back. Yes, I see the boat. Oh, blessed boat. I see it. Praise God. I see it. One. There's only one. No. Now, what do you say? Oh, 
Ted. Stop it. Ted, he's going to keep coming back. The wave. Uh, that's the third, Frank. There's only one in the boat. Where? The boat's in. Oh, oh, no. No, I need wait for me. My son. My son, take me to him. Oh, yes, yes. Forgive me. Come. I'll help you. Now, good girl, I think good girl. Oh, which one? Which one? Thomas. I know it. Thomas, yes. I know it. Yes, Thomas, the good Thomas, he lives. Stand aside, everybody. Let the widow Danelle yes. and the girl yes. through now. Yes. Let them through. Yes, Let them through. Know. Know My son. My son. Which one? Well, well, I'm back, Mother. Are you, are you pleased to see me? Teddy. Oh! Please. Stand back now. You, Teddy. Yes. Yes, me. Ain't I got a right to live? Tell me. Tell me quick. Where, where is my son? Where's Thomas? Tell me, Teddy. Where is my Thomas? Where do you think he is, old woman? Dead at the bottom of the sea. <laughs> Aye, Father Donahue. That was what he told me. My good Thomas was dead at the bottom of the sea. Dead. The good Thomas dead and Paddy. Paddy the evil from alive. Ah, oh, it wasn't right, Father. And in the days and nights that followed, I cried to God, Why did you do it? Why? Why did the sea take my dear Thomas from the boat and leave Paddy? Was there no reward on earth for goodness and sweetness of soul? And in the seventh night of my sorrow... There came an answer. I was lying on my bed. Outside the sea was singing and whispering. My window was open and I could hear the sea talking as I lay there crying. Crying from a long time. Oh, oh. Do not cry, Mother. Mother. I... I heard a voice. You heard me, brother. Thomas's voice. Oh, no. No, it's some wildness in my weary head. Mother, I am so weary. You must listen. Oh, dear Scott. Why do you do this to me? My son is dead. Dead in the sea. Why do you bring me the memory of his voice? Mother, mother, believe me. If I could only see you, I would believe. Oh, no. The horror the sea made of me. Wind and wave and grinding rock against my flesh. Oh, I wouldn't care, my son. Just let me see that it is you, not my own voice speaking in my head. Oh, mother, you don't know what you ask. But if there is no other way, Close your eyes until I give you a word to open them. I've, I've closed them. Now, now open, Mother, and have no fear. I beg you. Oh. This was oh. Thomas. Oh, no. Mother, why did he murder me? Murder? The sea was calm. We reached the pool where he set the copper in the brass lid. I stripped off my clothes and dove under. Oh. And when I tried to come up for another breath of air, oh, Mother, he wouldn't let me do it. Oh, no. With his hand, he held me under. My hands, they tore at his arm. But he held me down. Down until at last I screamed for mercy. And the water filled my mouth. Oh. My lungs and killed me. Oh. My own brother killed me. And that is why I tore myself out of the sea. I want to know why he did it there. Why? I cannot rest in peace until I know and understand. You tell me. Oh, oh speak, Mother. What gain could come to him for such a horror? I, I do not know. Oh, believe me, my son. I do not know. Then I must go back. I cannot stand this. Thing. Oh, my good Thomas. Look at this. What was Thomas de Nair's face? Mother? Look at it and give me your oath. You will not tell my Eileen or my brother of this night. Oh, but I... Your oath, Mother. They must not know. You hear me? They must not know. I swear, Thomas. Oh, merciful one, this pain. I go, Mother. Where? Back to the sea. Oh, and, and will we, will we ever 
me live again, my son. Yes. The day I find out why he made me drown, I will return, Mother. I will return. Thomas, my son, come back here. Oh, my son. My son. But he was gone, Father Donahue. Gone back to his nameless grave at the sea. Then, then it happened. Paddy talked his way into the good graces of the girl. Simple little Eileen. What did she know of the evil of men? I did with Paddy and my good Thomas's Eileen. Ah, oh, it took their life out of me. It made me long for the quiet of my grave. And then, then came the day of the wedding. Again, the fiddler was playing. Again, the good people of the islands were happy. I alone was sad, weeping. Weeping at what I knew. Oh, Mother Danelle, why do you sit here apart from all the rest and weep? I, I'm not weeping, girl. For weeks you've been so sad. Can't you find a little joy in your heart for this day of my marriage to your own son? My, my son, I do not love him as I did dear Tom. May he rest in peace. But Thomas himself told Patty that if he died, he wished that Patty had care for him. And, M- Mother Danelle, what is it? Your face so strange. Now he knows. I just remembered. Now he knows. <laughs> Who knows? What are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> there you are, my little bride to be. <laughs> oh, why waste your wedding day with this old woman? Mother of mine, though she be, her face is sour enough to curdle milk. Come on away now. No, no, wait, Patty. Mother Danelle, you must tell me. What is it that makes you stare at Patty with such an awful ah, look? That's the look she's always had. <laughs> oh, look how the sun glints on the sea. Ah, it's a day for a king. And I'm a king marrying the girl I've always wanted. Come kiss me, I mean. Kiss me so that all shall see me. Kissing the prettiest bride in all Ireland. No, please. Kiss me. Let the sky and the sea. Oh, and the... Mother Danelle! What did you make that sound for, old woman? What's going on around here? No, what is it? Who takes it? Now then, speak up, Mother. Why did you shriek like that? The sea. What of the sea? What are you putting your bony finger at out there? What are you... Look at the water's edge. Say, what is something's coming out of the sea? I... Look. Yeah, something's coming out of the sea, right? I, I, I see, see it now. Oh. It's a seal, oh. that's what it is. It's a seal. Oh. Where's the club? I don't know. It's not a seal. Huh? It's a man. Look, man. Bones. Just bones. Get out of here. I mean, do not look. Do not look. Oh, oh blessed Mary, she's fainted. She will not see. What? What? What is it? I can't move. I cannot move. No. You cannot move, my brother. You cannot move. That, that, that voice. Bones and little flesh. And yet you know the voice. Thomas. Thomas. Your brother Thomas. Come back again. No. Because now he knows. No. Now he knows. No. Knows what? Why you murdered me? Your flesh and blood. I heard it from your own lips. I... You wanted my Eileen always. I... That's why you did it. I... 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 Your clever tongue can no longer save your brother of mine. No. I have come a painful way to get you. No. No. No, you won't get me dead thing. No. I'll get away. I'll run. I'll run. And so he ran, Father Donahue. He turned and ran up, up the path that led to the top of the cliff. And behind him, slowly sobbing with the pain that tore at his dead bones, climbed my dead Thomas after him. And after Thomas, dragging my old bones, I went. Ah, oh, for they were my sons. And I had to see that right was done. Up, up. Up until at last Perry stood on the very edge, the sea five hundred feet below, shrieking and yelling and wailing. He stood there shrieking at that horrible thing. No, no, not 
thing. Stay back. Stay back. You bones of Bill, stay back. Fine. Back. Come no. for you, my brother. No. No. I come no. for you. No. <laughs> he fell. He fell. Mother, see. He didn't get me. Those rotten bones gave way beneath him. He didn't get me, Mother. He... Mother. What are you going to do? Mother. Mother! Over the cliff, Paddy went, turning and twisting, and into the sea where the water covered him over. When the others of the village came up there at last, I told them that the old bones of Thomas had done it, had clutched Paddy close to and thrust him over. Oh, Father Donahue, listen. It was I that day that final push had sent the evil son of mine to his death. Thomas tried and failed before he had his last measure of revenge. So I did it, Father. I, I gave Paddy the new life. And I gave him death. Is there any forgiveness in heaven for what I did? 